Have you ever heard the quote, your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could that they didn't stop to think if they should? Well, apparently the R&D department at General Dynamics hadn't when they created this affront to humanity. In today's review, I'm talking about the M60-2000, also known as the 120S. This fusion dance from hell combined the hull of the M60A1 with the turret from the M1A1 Abrams and was created by the aforementioned R&D department at General Dynamics in 1999 as a way to sell upgrade kits to foreign nations that were still using M60s. The sole prototype was unveiled at the International Defense Industry Fair in 2001, and later that same year took part in the Turkish M60 upgrade competition where it lost to IMI's Sabra 2 upgrade package. Later on, the Egyptian army considered adopting the 120S, but but that ended when Egypt got the go-ahead to build M1 Abrams domestically. By 2003, the prototype had been disassembled and given to the US Army. And finally, in 2009, the 120S was removed from General Dynamics marketing. And now, in 2024, it's been added to War Thunder as part of Update Alpha Strike as a Rank 7, 10.0 battle rating medium tank in the American tech tree. It'll set you back 260,000 research and a total of 910,000 Silver Lions. According to General Dynamics Marketing, the S in 120S stood for speed and survivability. As far as War Thunder is concerned, that's a lie. Across 55 games, I had a 58% win rate with a 1 KD. This thing is neither speedy nor survivable. At least it has the second most powerful cannon at its battle rating, only being beaten out by the abomination that is the 292. Now onto some stats of this thing. As always, starting from the back and working our way up. The 120S has a diesel engine which produces 750 horsepower, somehow making this thing the most powerful engine in an American M60. You're still only getting T72 speeds out of it though, with a max forward speed of 30 miles per hour and a reverse gear of 5 miles per hour. The engine is also huge, taking up the entire back half of the hull. Honestly, I don't think that there's been a single time that I've spawned in the 120S and didn't have something hit my engine. Moving up, the rest of the hull is basically empty except for the driver who for some reason has some hull mounted ammo storage on each side of him. It's like he's using the shells for armrests or something. Moving up a bit, I normally don't talk about this, but what is that turret ring gap? There's so much room in there that we could call it the Fulda Gap. That gap is so wide that we could use M22s as spaced armor. The worst part is, is that it only has 70 millimeters of armor, so almost anything that hits you will one-shot you by taking out your entire turret crew. It doesn't help that the hull maxes out at about 230 millimeters of armor, so 75% of the front of this tank can be pinned by anything heavier than an autocannon. Moving on to the turret, it's the same one found on the 11.0 battle rating M1A1, making it by default the best thing about this tank. For armor, the loader side turret cheek maxes out at about 510 millimeters, and the gunner side maxes out at 450 millimeters. While you will find the occasional tank at 10.0 that can pin through that, I've yet to be hit by anything that's pinned through a turret cheek on the 120S. The cannon on this tank is the same M256 120mm cannon found on all the Abrams from the M1A1 forward. Sadly, you do have to start with the M830 heat round, but it does have 480mm of pin, and the M829 dart is a rank 1 modification. That upgrades your pin to 491mm, which is already one of the best rounds at 10.0. But it gets even better because as a rank 4 modification, you can unlock the M829A1 with 598mm of pin making it the second best round that you can find at 10.0. It's the second best round that the US gets as a whole. MA29A1 can slice through any tank that you come up against. It doesn't matter if it's German, Russian, or Swedish. For most tanks, you don't even have to aim, you just point and fire. I've been pretty vocal about how much I hate M60s, but the cannon on this thing is so good that I don't mind having it in my lineup. And really, that's my overall stance on the tank. I hate the hull. It provides no armor and it's slow. But the cannon is so good that it really makes me overlook a lot of the shortcomings that I wouldn't have otherwise. If you're building an American 10.0 lineup or thinking about adding this to your lineup, I definitely think that the 120S is worth the grind and I think that it's worth spading. It definitely punches above its weight class, even if it can't take that many punches in return. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and remember to follow to stay updated whenever I upload more of these vehicle reviews.